Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and I just got back from a field trip, so I've been outside sweating all day. I probably, like, I'm looking at the, I probably don't look real great, but I wanted to talk about something, and I'm going to try and say it right. I'm going to try and say it right. Legendary Reliquaries. Legendary Reliquary. Z. I want to rhyme it. Like, my problem with saying this is I want to say legendary reliquary, but there's the is on the end, so it's legendary reliquaries. Whatever. I'm trying my best. Anyway, I want to give you my takeaways from playing this mode yesterday on stream. I'm going to try to run it a little bit more again tonight, but it's really late. We got back from our field trip super late, but I still have some tips I want to share. I want to show you the team building mistakes I made and just give you my impressions on this new game mode because it is really good. Like, I think that's my most important first impression here. I had fun doing it. And not only did I have fun doing it, I had fun doing something that was PvE, and I'm a PvP guy in this game, and it was manual. Like, manual PvE is not something I've been all about in War of the Visions for a really long time. This feels so much better than Tower to me, and it has super good generic rewards. That also motivates me to try a little bit harder, and guess what? As I'm sitting here trying a little bit harder, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, this is awesome. So, let me, let's talk about the gear first. I want to start with the drops, because that, in my opinion, is kind of what makes, do you see my screen, like, bugging out right there? That was weird. Okay, anyway, let's look at the gear that comes from this. And, like, my screen is still really bugged out. My computer's probably exploding right now or something. Yep, I don't know what's happening. Hopefully, I'm get through the video. Anyway, the Blood Sword and the Genji Glove are both insanely good pieces of gear. The Blood Sword is a one-handed sword with Life Steal on it. When you crit, you absorb 15% of the damage, Slash Attack 20, and Human Killer 10. Oh my, that's really good. And yes, the Slash Attack 20 makes it particularly good for slashing units, and it's a sla it's a sword, but units that have other damage types built in, striking damage, maybe they have missile damage built in or whatever, the Absorbing and the Human Killer are good for that as well. This sword is what a UR piece of gear should be. I love it. And then, let's not even mess around. Let let's talk about the Genji Gloves for a minute. Holy UR accessory, this thing does it all. So, it's uh, 502 HP, 60 attack, 18 defense, 60 magic, 8 spirit, 16 crit rate. That stat line alone on an accessory is insane. But, oh, there's more. The effects on this thing. You have physical and magical damage up 10%. So you're just going to do, you're just going to get this 10% damage buff regardless of the damage type you're doing. Then it has paralyze resist and toad resist. Both of these are key resistances for PvP. Think about somebody like Halloween Lucia changing a fight in Guild Wars because she turns you to a toad or an arena or something. And it has increased max damage by 2000. This piece of gear is absolutely next level. You should Everyone should try to build the Genji Glove, and if you're using a one-headed slasher, think about, like, Winged Stern with this sword. And now that I'm saying that, like, it definitely looks like him, so it's probably kind of for him. This is two amazing pieces of gear, and that's two reasons why I'm extra excited about this. I love seeing rewards that are not only good, like, the elemental rings from Tower are situationally really good, and in fact, when you're in their situation, they can be the best in slot. Like, if you're building anti-dark sure the dark ring or the light ring is best in slot piece of gear on one of your units but that's it outside of that it's not good so these are good all the time this is what UR gear should be this is a push in the right direction I love it now I want to also talk about some of my team building mistakes because I did not get the last set of rewards. I got to wave eight and lost and it's because I made some mistakes. I'm going to look at both of my teams right here and tell you what I did good, what I did bad, and how I'm going to fix it. So first of all, with my earth team that I made, most of this is good. Most of it is good. Bradley, Moshery, Oberon, Urel all get to stay in this group when I fix it. The thing I'm going to change is Ayaka, and I'm actually going to throw in either another tank, like an actual tank, maybe even like MR Mott or something like that, 
or I'm going to throw in more damage. You need a party that can run over the first like six to seven floors. Just full damage, kill everything as fast as you can. You need to set that up. That is a big tip. So have a team like a mono earth, mono dark, mono ice, some kind of team that could just come out here and stomp a few floors for you and save your turn order. So having Ayaka in here cost me a bunch of turns. That's ultimately not what cost me the run. It's not what prevented me from winning on my first try but it definitely held me back then in party two okay party two becomes a lot more interesting let's say for party two you're building something to take down those last few floors i only got to floor eight so i can't speak about nine and ten but floor eight was a monster and i just lacked the means to deal with it now I made a good call in having a very strong tank, like having a tank in your group once you get to the floors uh, where the mobs start hitting really hard is important, but I don't know that you need two healers. Notice that I have two healers, Yuna and Sylvie in this group. That's way too much, and I ended up just having too much support and tankiness and not enough damage. So if I was fixing this group, well, the first thing I would do would be change it to dark, right? I would just put a tank into a dark group, and then instead of running a dedicated healer like Yuna, I would probably run somebody like Sylvie, but instead of Blade Soul, switch her to White Mage. So she's in here to be able to do a bunch of damage, but also a spot heals when I need her. Warrior of Light can kind of help keep himself alive and Sylvie she scales with magic that helps her scale with Mashiri and Elena but she's a sword based unit she's using slashing moves I killed several of my own units because those dang carbuncles not only cast reflect on themselves which I should have seen coming because they just did it right in front of me but they also cast it on their friends Oh man, does that suck. When your Mashiri and your Yuna walk up there and they're like, take this, and then they just blast themselves off the map. Yeah, that's a, that's a hashtag feels bad moment right there. So I do think you still need a ton of damage in your party too. It needs to not be purely mages because you're going to run into those carbuncles. Also, some status effect resist gear could be really good. A good example of status effect gear that's pretty easy to get, especially if you were following my advice from the last raid video, is just plus zero white marshmallow miniatures. You get poison, paralyze, petrify, confusion, and stop resist 25 on this thing just by leveling it to 50. You don't need to plus it at all. So building some of these could be really helpful. You're going to need to like spot build some gear. I'm excited to try to clear this again. Now, I have to go to bed like right away. So I'm not going to actually try again tonight, but maybe I'll stream sometime this weekend and finish this thing off so I can get my gear done and get ready. If I was fixing this group, I would take Yuna out. Like, let's say I was still going to play light. I would swap out Yuna for another big time damage dealer. Maybe somebody like a Jaden who also likes magic. And so she, he kind of fits in with the theme of my group, but you know, isn't uh, isn't there for the heals. Now, I need Esper Resonance, so Jaden might not be my personal best option. And in fact, if I wanted to give myself some physical damage options as well, I could just splash in a lock, Violet, Lucio would be really good. Um, any of the above for that Thancred. Maybe it's, guys, maybe it's Thancred time. Maybe, maybe it's finally his moment and we're going to have, why do I have Siren Resonance on Thancred? Who knows? Who knows? Because he's an old unit and it's an Esper that I had way back in. It is Esper suck. It might not be Thancred time anymore. Either way, you want a ton of damage. I think you want your healers to not be dedicated healers because when they get a turn and they don't have somebody to heal, it's just costing you a turn. Like, Ayaka dropping meteors wasn't exactly helping me carry. And I also think it's a good idea to give your tank a weapon and allow them to do a little bit of damage. Warrior of Light, especially at 140 fully built, has a reasonable amount of attack. Like, he's sitting at 1,000 attack, and he's not really building for it, right? So he can come in here and put out at least respectable damage, help you build up chains, something like that. You're really going to need to be smart with team building, especially if you're not just sitting on stacked rosters. I think I'm actually going to disband this party and then I'm going to remake it focusing on one of my higher damage elements. Maybe something like Dark. I think this is a great one for a lot of people. Sephiroth, 
Dwayne can be a tankier unit for you. Again, when you're playing dark, you do suffer from a little bit of a lack of tank. Whisper can be a high damage bruiser option. Like, I'm just filling this out as I go. I can put people in here like Fina, who has heals, but is a damage dealer. And then I can also do somebody else. Like, who else does that? Okay, you guys, arithmeticians are going to be absolute banger units on this because they have instant cast spells also saving you some turns, right? Instant cast magic is a big deal because yes, even though you might channel a spell and the mob is not gonna move before your spell goes off, you're gonna have other players on your team move and that's wasting your turns. So I think arithmeticians will be MVPs for you as well. Okay, so this is kind of a example of a dark team I could run. I might swap out one of these two mages for like Ruin Stern, somebody like that. Either way, go with your highest damage. Just use your two best teams. You really need to come in here. You need to manual it. You need to take minimum turns, and you need to get yourself these uh, these pyramids because my oh my, you want to build this gear. So there we go, guys. I got to say, Jay, I can already build out one piece of gear. I haven't decided if I'm going to do the sword or the Genji gloves first. The Genji gloves seem more generically useful, so I'll probably go that route. I hope those tips were helpful for you. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.